Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. Afraid we gotta dock your pay. Oh, by the law. I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me. I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town, avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls, and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. W what's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites. We rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Make sure he pays up. 
Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Yeah? The colony ship? Are you talking about that old rumor? Some great big starship packed full of colonists what got lost in the Aether never to be found again. <laughs> Ain't heard that one since I was but a stripling. Can't say it was terribly convincing far as rumors go. Is there a reason you asking? All right, easy now. No need to get your hackles up. Maybe you've been out in the sun too long. Why don't you head over to the cantina? Get yourself some zero-G brew. It's a brew that's good for what ails you. Look, I don't know what's got you caterwauling about hope this and colony that, but you need to stop, or there's gonna be trouble. Trouble's in the asking. Or don't much care for folk running their mouths, spreading hoaxes and the like. Frankly, neither do I. Something I can do for you? the latest report only the part I don't know you uh-huh the unreliable you say never heard of any company supply ship with that particular name I don't know what you're about but this here is a spacer's choice drinking establishment we're all loyal hard-working company folk here <laughs> am I that easy to read yeah We've been having some problems lately. Loyalty issues, lines in the sand. I know where folk in Edgewater stand, but you, I don't know you. If you're gonna have a drink, I'd like to ask that you do it within the premises. <sighs> Can't have you taking drinks over to those deserters. <sighs> Traitors, the lot of them. Bunch of folks decided they were tired of working and went out into the wilds to fend for their own selves. The town's already struggling to make quotas, even without that band of slackwits abandoning their posts. Bunch of lazy, shiftless rung leeches. Anyway, enough about them. What can I do for you? Do you now? And what makes you think Mr. Thompson wants to talk to you? He's a busy man. You want to talk to Mr. Thompson, try ignoring your duties. He'll summon you up to that great big tower atop the cannery, and you'll get yourself a proper dressing down. It is a good thing. If you're not pulling your weight, you don't deserve to live here. Simple as that. Coming right up.
Never seen you here before. You a visitor? Welcome. On behalf of the Spacer's Choice family, let me welcome you to... To, uh... Where am I again? What? No, I'm Winslow. Lester Winslow. Says so right on my permanent record. I am in no condition to do any work. Not so long as my injuries trouble me. Yep. Got my mitt stuck in a rotor wheel. Shredded my wrist up real good. Conrad went and sewed up my hand, but I couldn't do much about the pain. Boss was real generous to me, though. Got myself a 5% discount on Zero G Brew. After the second bottle, the only pain I feel is emotional. Oh, you can say that again. The Spacer's Choice family is the only family I'll ever need. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. I've been feeling pretty low these days. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in frontier justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. 
Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. As long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. His likeness decorates many a wanted poster. Do you have any relevant information about this individual? I am obliged to warn you against forming acquaintanceships, friendships, partnerships, or any felicitous relationship with a wanted criminal. I am also obliged to inform you of our referral program. For every criminal you refer to the authorities, the board will reward you. I am obliged to remind you that questioning the veracity of the board's orders is a punishable offense. Consider this your last warning. Unfortunately, the arrest of Mr. Wells falls outside my authority. I enforce the company policy as Spacer's choice in the region of Emerald Vale. Wells is wanted by the board. If you have information related to the location of Phineas V. Wells, you are required to submit that information to your nearest board authority. Any information regarding outstanding bounties and wanted criminals should be directed to Mr. Udom Bedford. Mr. Bedford's office is located on the Groundbreaker. Halcyon's original colony ship, now repurposed into a space station. Mr. Udom Bedford represents the board's interest on the Groundbreaker. Something else I can do for you? Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. Don't let the boss catch you saying that. Hey, you hear about Wilson? Her marauder's got in. Just between us? Wilson deserted. Lost his nerve. Ran off in the thick of night. You're kidding me. Damn. Always thought he was made of Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine. Whoa, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. You know how words sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait, no. Oh, damn it. Okay, listen. Maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. You're right. I I'm plagued. I'm afflicted. I know it's hard to believe what with the fine and dashing figure I cut, but it's all true. Hey, you're hale and healthy and possibly for hire, ain't ya? I'd do a good turn for an expiring old man? Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work, that's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in. 
Nab that medicine and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company policy. More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. It is a reality of life in the Vale. Grass is brown, sky is gray, marauders are outside the walls. So you'll do it then? You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, Law, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Just keep your head down when you're in there. Marauders have taken over. Probably tracking mud all over the archives. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my gravesite fees right here. See? I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. You're making a mistake working for Me our needing family. nothing but Saltuna for a year. Just the way it goes, I suppose. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Not half as awful as the bill Eugene left us with. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know Eugene was an asset to us all. May his Adams be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees. Which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives.
Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. The war! The coming apocalypse! Man versus machine! I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. That's right. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. Auto-mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about. Firing at the birds. Orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans mostly, some spaces chaw, few bit carts. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the Resistance a bad name. They have sent a scout, prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. The scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Mechanicals got a weak spot in their midsections. I think the technical term is, um, the blue glowy square thing. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent! A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, yeah, I've been saving up a couple of bits for just such a project. Fancy threads. That some kind of hibernation suit? You run into any trouble? Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners, skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Well, that's the word, extortion. Been on the tip of my tongue all day. What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? Experience was my teacher. Experience and... So, you want to be an embalmer, brochures one through five, courtesy of the Spacer's Choice Department of Career Development. A ship? Dear me. 
You seem to have lost the ability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. This is what happens when you let your imagination run wild. I don't approve of fantasizing. It's a dreadful habit, corrosive to the mental faculties. You ought to let the vicar take a look inside your head. Vicar Maximilian, our man from the OSI, here to spread the message of scientism like a soothing balm upon a feverish head. Or so you'd expect. You'll find him in our local church, probably neglecting his duties. He doesn't seem to like us much. The vicar has not been with us long, and in his relatively short tenure in Edgewater, gives off the distinct whiff of superiority. Go ahead. Edgewater has been good to me. I consider myself privileged to work here. I am never wanting for work, not since the plague started. The plague's come at us with a vengeance this year. Lost six workers in as many months. I wouldn't call them good workers, mind you. If they were any good, they'd have been treated. Still, it is a shame. Company policy, friend. We don't have enough medicine to treat all of us, so we treat the best among us. Mr. Thompson's brainchild. Have you met him yet? Thoughtful-looking fellow, stares out of his office most hours. What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? You were probably poking around my things. I really shouldn't leave my letters sitting out in the open. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? The good Vicar Maximilian and I have never quite seen eye to eye, but your point is well taken. Here you are, gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an I.O.U. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. You run into any trouble? 
Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Uh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Yeah? <laughs>